everybody, this is Rising Stars. I'm here with one of the best players in the state, uh, LaPree Pace. Last year, he starred for Conwell Egan. Uh, next year, he'll be featured for Putnam Science in Connecticut. How you doing, LaPree? How you doing? Okay. Now, LaPree, you were second team All-State this year? Yes. Okay. Now, talk about that your experience this year, because this is your last year at Conwell Egan. You were there for four years. You had a great high school career. And now you're transitioning. Talk about that transition. Uh, I mean, I'm about to play with one of the best players in the country, Muhammad Diallo. Uh, you got Eric Ayala, one of the top of his classes, too. I mean, it's a better experience, move on to bigger things. High school was fun, but now we got to get to the real deal. Absolutely. Now, let's talk about preparing for that real deal. Like, what? how are you preparing, like, mentally to move on? Just, just focus, focus. Mm -hmm. I mean, I watch Coach Sean every day. So. For the last three months, I've been with him every day. Mm -hmm. Every day we're working, every day. Mm -hmm. Now, I was at that workout yesterday, and I, I really saw, like, I, I mean, I, I watched you throughout the season this past year, and, you know, of course you were good, but it seems like, you know, you're really starting to fill out as a player. You feel like it looks like you're playing a little stronger and your, your handle's a little sharper. Is that something you're focusing on? Yeah, I mean, we talk, me and him talked all the time. Uh, growing up, I didn't play basketball. I was a football kid. And one day I had got hurt real bad. My mom was like, listen, you got to choose which one you want. And I had chose basketball. My dad, he was upset about it. But, mm -hmm. I mean, we went through it. And going into going into ninth grade, Coach Sean had, was just coming back from overseas. And my dad was like, you got to get with him. You got to get with him. Mm -hmm. So we had went to a workout one day. And he was like, uh, I want you every day. So we were like, well. You want to be our AAU coach? And he had thought about it, he had thought about it. We begged him. We got, so it took him about two weeks to crack. And he's like, <laughs> I got it. So I've been with him. So us playing with the players, I didn't play my the guard position. So once I got, once my 10th grade year was up, he's like, listen, you have to be the one or a two. If you want to be 6'4", six, 6'5", six, you have to be a one or a two. That's it. So mm -hmm. ever since then, we've been, I've been polishing my handle every year, mm -hmm. slowly by slowly developing my jump shot and everything. Mm -hmm. I, I know I could always get to the basket at will, but it was all about other things I had to work on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I see that in your game, like that football approach. I see you play very physical, like you use your um, your size to your advantage. Is there a particular player that's like in the NBA that you kind of model your game after, or did you see like your game can kind of be like that? Like, you keep, uh, I mean, God. I understand you want to be your own yeah. self, but I'm just saying, you know, projection-wise. Um, my God, that gave me a name. I can't remember it. And it will come to me. He gave me, he gave okay. me somebody that okay. was in the league that he, he just. Before your time? Yeah. I, <laughs> I wasn't with it. Oh, man. Who can I think of? I would say a little bit of Paul Pierce. Um, I think you're more of a guard than Paul Pierce. Paul Pierce was like a three, four. Early in his career, he played yeah. like a two. That's probably, you don't remember him early in his career. No, he was no. a little quicker back then. Celtics, he Paul could Pierce. dunk and all that. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, Paul Pierce. Um, but probably sort of that kind of style of play. But I think you like to attack the basket too. Now, are you currently receiving interest from any coaches? I mean, yeah. well, any universities and colleges? Uh, uh, somebody, my dad said, uh, Florida International just called, I mean, San Diego State was on the board. Also, uh, Hampton, um, Hostra. I think I have a visit next week with Ryder. So there's a lot of schools on the board. Nice, nice. Now, there was some information out there saying, like, you were already committed to, like, North Carolina A&T. What happened with that? I have no idea what happened with that. That was in the air. It was, it was more so out of the blue. I think, I think one of my coaches from my high school had – said something about it because they loved the school and they've been down there before and visited the school and they thought that was the, what I was going to do because the coaches uh, was named Jamal Brown had came up to one of my school to my school to one of my practices and they had sat there and talked for about an hour or two hours mm -hmm. while we practiced and a lot of people thought that was what I was going to do Wow so that's that was just a rumor out there <laughs> yeah that was wow it became official like everybody was like you know yeah he's headed here or there so how does it feel now to know that like people want you though? I mean, you 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 kind of progressed you, throughout your career. You I mean like you said, you started as a football player, then you just kind of got into basketball, kind of fell into it, and now you're like you're being recruited by all these these universities. These are good schools. Yeah, it, it feels great. It feels great. Uh, I mean, I'm not gonna say about it. I just gotta keep working on bigger things. Gotta dream big. Absolutely. 
Absolutely. So you were featured like back in March in our Rising Stars game. It was in a, uh, in the Wells Fargo Center. Um, talk about that experience. How did you? How was that experience for you? Be able to play on the NBA floor? Uh, it was it was fun. I mean, a after the game, I was, I was talking to DeAndre and all of them because we had seen him after that. Yo, we were like, yo, we realized Steph is the best shooter in the world because that three line is super <laughs> far. <laughs> yeah, it is. It, it's it's a lot to it, man. So. <clears throat> where'd you grow up at? Like, um, like kind of where'd you hone your skills as a player? I know, I know you're from Philly, but like, mm -hmm. was there an area in Philly or outside of Philly? Like, where did you? Uh, yeah, growing up, playing uh, park wise, we started in mansion section. Mm -hmm. uh, that's all. That's all we ever played was there. I mean, I go other places, but I, I don't play ball other places. I only play ball at home. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, who was your toughest matchup? Like throughout your high school career, is this one person in particular like really like man, dude, dude always give me work or I give him work or whatever the case. Like who's my your funnest, toughest matchup? My funnest matchup would be, and it's always all love. I mean, I mean, people think we get into it during during the season, but it'll be it'll be not say Bostic. Okay. We always get into it, and yeah. no, not but love is just the competitive of the game. I, I, can, I can see that because both of y'all kind of like aggressive. Yeah. I play with chips on y'all's yeah. shoulder. <laughs> he guards me every time. It never fails. I can see that. I can definitely see that. Um, I want to pick your brain a little bit, uh, uh, Lepre, and we want to uh, talk about like what you think in, in terms of basketball. All right. So if you had to pick between, say, I don't know, Chris Paul and Damian Lillard, who's, who's, the, who's the best player and why? Well, it, it depends. Would you? Well, who would you want to play for? As a, if you were a two guard, who would you rather play with, Chris Paul, or Dame Lillard? I mean, they both. I, I like Dame and Lillard. But okay. <laughs> it depends how the team is. I mean, Chris mm -hmm. Paul fits with them. He has two bigs that run the floor. Mm -hmm. He has a, a, a shooting guard that is a spot up shooter, mm -hmm. and he has a three that's, that's a slasher. Mm -hmm. So I mean, with Dame and Lillard, they just bought another piece in with a Turner, but. With him and CJ McCullough, that's they're two dangerous yeah. duos. Yeah, no doubt about it. They are very, very dangerous. Who's your favorite player in the NBA? Russell Westbrook, no doubt about Russell it. Russell Westbrook, yeah. you said that without hesitation. No doubt about it. <laughs> so what do you think about this situation with Durant? I mean, he just bounced on Russell Westbrook. What's up with that? What do you think about that? I, I had a problem with it. I didn't care that he left. I had a problem with that, where he went. Mm. The, we were up 3-1 and should have won. Absolutely. And let them come back. And wow. Then you leave and go to them. But that seemed like, like, vicious, man. Like, for him, to, it seemed like that, that kind of cut deep. Yeah, Russell by the average 30, 11, 11, call it a day. Yeah, I can dig <laughs> So, because, I mean, I could just imagine, because, you know, being a former player, you know, going to war with somebody every day, and then they did it for eight years, and then you leave, but not only do you leave, but you go to the team that ended your era. That he they ended your era. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then you go and play for them. That just seems like no. Man. They tried to compare it to LeBron, but it, Miami wasn't beating the Cavs. The Boston was beating the Cavs every single time in the playoffs. So mm -hmm. if he would have went to Boston, then they'd be like, "Yeah, what are you doing?" Mm, but he exactly. did it. Well, I mean, to each his own. You know, I guess it's a better situation for him. Um, over or under, you think they're going to win more than 73 games this year or less? Less. Okay. Some high points got to drop. Yeah, Sorry to say. True. That's true. They were just talking about that. Um, I think uh, Clay was talking about he's not sacrificing his game for nobody. He shoots too well for his points to drop. He's going to make six threes a game. There's yeah, no doubt about yeah, it. Yeah, As long as he's wide open, he's going to get his shots. So, <clears throat> okay, now, what's your aspirations with the game? Obviously, you know, we want to talk about like, where do you see yourself in the future, you know, as a, as a player and as, as a person? As of right now, I just focus on getting to college. I mean, uh, everything else is going to fall into place, but right now I'm focusing on getting to college. Once I get to college, I'll worry about stuff after that. Mm -hmm. Now, being an older player, not old, but, you know, transitioning out of high school, let's talk about some of the younger kids that may be coming up. What would you tell – a, a young kid that wants to maybe be the next Lepre, you know, a guy that come from nowhere and all of a sudden these D1 schools want him. What would you tell that kid? It's funny you say that. My family, I'm I'm the only one I like out of the teenager wise that plays basketball. Uh, no, they don't. No one else plays anything. 
uh, my little cousins were on nine, eight, and all them. They're just starting to play basketball because of me. I mean, wow. they don't. They play football because our family is a football tradition. You must play football. If you didn't play, if you're a boy and you don't play football, there's a problem. <laughs> there's a problem, and yeah. someone's gonna fix that problem. If you didn't play. <laughs> so everyone, everyone has played, and okay. the little ones they're still playing, but they more so like basketball more than anything. Wow. And it, okay. it was only because coming to my games, they were having fun with it. So, I mean, I just tell them that if they gonna play. Be for real with them, play, and two of my little cousins actually works out with Coach Sean and me. So, mm -hmm. so I tell them every time, you're gonna work, keep working every mm -hmm. day, keep working. Mm -hmm. Talk about a few more questions. Talk about that, you know, Sean Colson workout because that it seemed very intense. Like, um, how is it like playing in that situation? You, you know, playing uh, uh, with a tense guy like that because he, he's getting in your face even in workouts. Yeah, I mean, uh, more so he, he's a fighting figure to all of us. So. He's always there for us no matter what, but when it's time to get down in business, he doesn't play. So, mm -hmm. I mean, we kind of everything triggers through that. So if he's la if he's laughing around, we're gonna laugh around because we know that all right, it's time to chill now. But mm -hmm. once it's time for business, we it's know business. yeah, it's all business. Yeah, no doubt about it. So I mean, you're in a great situation. Uh, I think you know it's it's very um, beneficial to you to be you know have a guy like that who not only you know play in Philly, but he went to college, he played some pro, and, he, and he, even in the NBA. Do you see yourself maybe making it to the NBA one day? Yeah, okay. I do, I do. I mean, okay. one of our friends, one of our friends, we always, we'll be the same since ninth grade. We'll, we'll all be in New York, New York with him when he, he gets announced. I mean, okay. he's at Virginia right now. I told him if he has a good year this year, we out this year, but. No doubt. Two years, two years in Virginia is on the schedule. Mm -hmm. 22 months, we say it every time, 22 that, months, that's what's he will up. be a pro. <laughs> and it'll pre following right behind him. Yeah, that's what we all said. We told him, we told him, he said, uh, he said, y'all got to give me two years, let me live on my own, then y'all can come live with me. Because we always told him we're going to go to every NBA workout until we all get in. No doubt about it. Now, is there one team in particular that you would want to play for? No. I thought you say the Sixers, man. No. Uh, <laughs> What's wrong with the Sixers? I, I ain't with it, but if it got to be the Sixers, money is money. Yeah, no doubt about it. Well, the Sixers is going to turn in the right direction, right? No, the Sixers is going to be horrible this year. Oh, wow. Why you say that? It's just going to be horrible. Okay. okay. I ain't no Sixers fan anyway. I never have been. So, it's, <laughs> so who, been. who's your team? I'm an OKC fan. Oh, man. You ain't never been to OKC a day in yeah, your life. I, I'm in love with Russell Russell. That's my <laughs> man. I grand. No matter if Durant left or not. We got Ben Simmons. We got MB coming in. We got we got some some, some, some horses real. coming in. MB is horrible until he plays. Wow. So we ain't gonna trip about him. Okay. Ben Simmons is not winning Rookie of the Year. We already know Brandon Ingram's about to win Rookie of the Year. Brandon Ingram? Yes. Ooh. He's I might like, lean towards Dunn. If they trade Rudio, he will win Rookie of the Year. Okay. If not Simmons, I'm leaning towards Dunn. But if they don't trade, I don't got done winning because he's not going to get enough exposure. Well, I mean, listen, Rubio had his opportunity. I, I, I can see Dunn coming in there and taking that spot. They ain't going to get They're not out. happy with um, with him in the first place. Yeah, I know. And he's not happy. Yeah. But it, Why would they the draft year, Dunn if, if not, for, you know, if they was happy with who, Rubio? Why would you give up Dunn? Well, because, I mean, because they both play the same position. They both point guards. And Dunn likes to have the ball on his Dunn hands. Dunn about six five, almost two twenty. He's way over Rudy. I my eyes. I mean, other people might say something different. But you but got you got the, uh, the 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 high flyer playing the two. Um, with the lights can get. Um, he doesn't even start. He doesn't. he doesn't. That's what makes it bad. He doesn't. Then you got Wiggins. So, I think they they're moving towards a youth movement. To tell yeah. you the truth, with with Cat there and. You know Wiggins. You know I think they're going to use a uh, move towards a youth movement. Just nobody, uh, <clears throat> nobody has decided to pick up Rubio. I mean I don't think he has much value right now. I put him on a bench, but they're not going to do it because mm -hmm. he's been in the league. Why not? And Dunn's a rookie. They're not going to do it. It's just not going to happen. Maybe halfway through the year, but okay, not right now. Well, listen. I'll try, since you were in the Rising Stars first event, I'm going to try not to hold it against you that you're an OKC fan. <laughs> you know, we're going we're gonna, to um, just bypass that. But 
definitely congratulations on all your success, man. Keep it up. Keep up the hard work. Keep the right people in your corner. You already know. And like you said, like hopefully 22 months for you as well. Yeah. All right, Pri? Thank you. Thanks for coming down. All Thank right? you.